Let's now turn our attention to the business of calculating some common descriptive statistics. We will use the blood pressure data from a homework exercise in Module 2. This data was a random sample of patients admitted to a single hospital over a specified period of time. We had you calculate a confidence interval for the proportion of all patients with a body mass index of 30 or higher. I would like to first focus on systolic blood pressure, a continuous variable. Starting with numerical summaries for continuous data, let's look at measures of central tendency and spread. For the purposes of illustration, I have randomly selected five systolic blood pressure measurements from the sample to use for our calculations, shown here in ascending order. The two primary measures of central tendency I want to focus on are the mean and the median. The mean of these five numbers is 144.4 and is simply the sum of the observations divided by the number of observations, here five. The median is calculated by sorting the observations in ascending order, which is already done here, and then selecting the middle observation, here a systolic blood pressure of 138. The mean is primarily a measure of center based on the magnitude of the set of observations, while the median is primarily a measure of center based on the magnitude of the middle value of the set of observations. An important difference between these measures relates to their handling of outlying values. If I simply replace the largest of the five observations, a systolic blood pressure of 164, with a systolic pressure of 221, let's examine the impact on these two measures. The mean shifts from a pressure of 144.4 to 155.8. However, the median pressure is unaffected by the increase in this single value and remains 138. If we were to replace the 221 with an even larger pressure, we could further distort the mean without having any impact on the median. Because of this sensitivity to outlying values, we refer to the mean as a sensitive statistic. Because of its resistance to outliers, we refer to the median as a robust statistic. Depending on the distribution of values in your sample, the mean and median may differ dramatically, and your choice of measure will depend on the notion of center that you are most interested in describing. Before moving on, one additional point I want to mention about the median is how to calculate it when there is an even number of observations. Here I have added a sixth value a pressure of 166 to our original set of five observations. Calculation of the mean is straightforward, simply being the sum of the six values divided by six, here equal to a pressure of 148. The median here is simply the mean of the two middle observations, 138 plus 152 divided by two, which equals a pressure of 145. Of course, in general, you would rarely do these calculations by hand and would use a program like StatCrunch, but it is useful to have an understanding of the calculation of these measures. Moving on to measures of spread, let's return to our original five observations and calculate the variance, the standard deviation, and the IQR or interquartile range. Similar to the mean, the variance is a measure of spread focused on differences in magnitude of the observations. This measure is a function of the squared deviations of each individual observation from the mean of the observations. For this set of five points, the variance is 182.8. Closely related to variance is the standard deviation, commonly denoted as SD. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance, here 13.5. This measure provides a way to discuss dispersion of data points around the mean. We can, for example, talk about being two standard deviations above the mean. Here the mean value is 144.4, the standard deviation is 13.5, Thus, two standard deviations above the mean would be 144.4 
plus 2 times 13.5, which equals a pressure of 171.4. The IQR is a measure of spread based on the magnitude of the spread for the middle 50% of the observations. Our first step in calculating the IQR, like with the median, is to list the data in ascending order. To calculate the IQR, we need to first discuss what quartiles are. These are the values that divide a set of data into four equal parts. Heuristically, the first quartile, designated Q1, cuts off the lower 25% of the values in the data, here represented by a pressure of 138. There are actually a number of different ways to define and calculate statistical quartiles. See, for example, the uh, reference in the lecture notes for this uh, module. But we will use the values produced by StatCrunch, which uses the CDF method described in the reference. The second quartile, designated Q2, cuts the data set in half and is numerically equal to the median, here represented by 138. The third quartile, designated Q3, cuts off the lower 75% of the values in the data, or alternatively cuts off the upper 25% of the values in the data, here represented by a pressure of 152. As you can see, it is possible, depending on the distribution of values in your data, for the different quartiles to have the same value. Now let's get back to the calculation of the IQR. The IQR is a single number and is equal to the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile, here equal to 152 minus 138, which is a difference in blood pressures of 14 points. Numerically, the IQR represents the difference in the blood pressures for the middle 50% of the data in the sample. As we did with the mean and the median, let's examine the differences in how the variance, standard deviation, and IQR handle outlying values. As before, if I replace the largest of the five observations, a pressure of 164, with a pressure of 221, the variance shifts from a value of 182.8 to a value of 1391.2, and the standard deviation shifts from a value of 13.5 to 37.3. In contrast to these sizable shifts, the IQR, like the median, is unaffected by the increase in this single value. As a result, both the variance and standard deviation, like the mean, are referred to as sensitive statistics. The IQR, like the median, is referred to as a robust statistic. Let's move from descriptive summary measures for continuous data to those for categorical data and look at providing frequency tables for the sex and bin BMI variables in the BP dataset. Generally referred to as one-way frequency tables, these tables provide information on the frequency or count of observations in each category of the variable, as well as the relative frequency or percent of the total number total number of observations that this count represents. For this data, there are a total of 150 individuals with a gender designation. 50 or 33 percent are female and 100 or 67 percent are male. For BMI category, there are a total of 147 individuals with a BMI value. Of those, 30 individuals, or 20.4%, have a BMI of 25 or below, considered lean. 59 individuals, or 40.1%, have a BMI from 25 to 30, considered overweight. And 58 individuals, or 39.5%, have a BMI above 30, considered obese. In future modules, we will generalize the idea of the one-way frequency table to 2x2 two two and larger tables. For example, here we could look at the 2x2 two two table describing BMI category breakdown by gender. Let's now take a look at graphical summaries for continuous data, again using systolic blood pressure for our illustration. 
Here we will include all 149 observed systolic pressures in the BP dataset. The first graphical summary displayed here is a histogram. This displays the distribution of values for a variable by dividing them up into consecutive bins that span the entire range of values in the data. The height of each bin represents the frequency or relative frequency, i.e. proportion or percentage, of values contained in the bin. The histogram shown here for systolic BP provides information on the general distribution of pressures in the sample, including a sense of both center and spread of the pressure values. The trick of constructing a good histogram is deciding how wide to make each bin. In general, this is automatically handled by software, but there may be interest at times to change the default binning behavior. Let me mention one other interesting feature of histograms before moving on to box plots. Just by looking at a histogram, it is possible to determine the relative order of the mean and median of the variable in question. If the histogram has a balanced, symmetric shape, this implies that the mean and median are approximately the same. If the histogram has a long tail off to the right, as shown here, we say that the histogram is right skewed. This implies that the mean is larger than the median. The long tail indicates that there are larger values pulling the mean higher. If the histogram trails off to the left, as shown here, we say that the histogram is left skewed. This implies that the mean is smaller than the median. The long tail indicates that there are smaller values pulling the mean lower. The next graphical summary displayed here is an example of a box plot. Box plots are most useful for comparing categorical groups within a data set. This graph shows side-by-side -side box plots of systolic blood pressure among female on the left and males on the right. Box plots concisely display key aspects of the numerical characteristics of data distributions and allow for easy visual comparisons among categories or groups in the data. Let's briefly discuss the anatomy of a box plot. Let's use the female box plot to identify the different features of interest. The blue box is bounded below by the first quartile and above by the third quartile. Thus, the vertical width of the blue box represents the IQR. The black bar within the box represents the second quartile, or median. The lines extending above and below the box are called whiskers, and they extend from the first and third quartiles to the farthest observation not farther than 1.5 times the IQR. The individual points shown beyond the whiskers represent potential outliers. The use of the term outlier here doesn't have any particular statistical meaning. It should be taken to mean that these points are near the edge of the distribution of the data and may potentially be of special interest. Given this information, let's discuss how the female box plot compares to the male box plot. The IQR for males is larger than the IQR for females. However, the median pressure for females is larger than that of males. In general, the systolic pressures for males appear to be more variable than those for females, and there are several rather high pressures for males which look to be above 200. These values may have a large impact on the mean value for males. We have introduced the most commonly encountered numerical and graphical summaries. As we will see going forward, Every statistical analysis should begin with a descriptive summary of the data. Depending on type of data at hand, the design of the study that generated the data, and the goal of the analysis, a great variety of numerical and graphical summaries can be used to characterize and shed light on the structure of the data. This concludes Segment 2 of 2 of our discussion of descriptive statistics.